coloring friends my name is Amanda and this is my channel Amanda Colors I'm really excited about today's video because it is something that I am oddly passionate about um, I have been using alcohol markers for many 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 years um, probably more than 20 years and while I've been using them for a long time I definitely would not call myself an expert but there are things that I've learned along the way that I feel will probably be helpful for people starting out with alcohol markers um, so I thought I would put together a bit of a beginner's guide to alcohol markers and hopefully it will be helpful um, I have also had a number of requests um, in my comments on different videos for this kind of um, video so hopefully it's really helpful don't forget you can find me on pinterest at amanda.colors sorry at amanda colors on instagram and tiktok at amanda.colors on facebook at color with us and my website with lots of freebies and other resources is amandacolors.com so let's get into it okay so when it comes to markers, there are two different kinds. There are water-based markers and there are alcohol-based markers. This video is about alcohol-based markers um, because they are what I use the most. Um, the benefits of alcohol markers are that they blend beautifully. You can get a much smoother finish than you can with water-based markers. But there is a downside in that what, uh, alcohol markers will bleed through to the other side of the page and I'll show you what I mean by that. So this book I have colored completely in alcohol markers and as you can see this is the side with the picture and the reverse side the color has come through. So it is not, alcohol markers are not suitable for using in books that have um, the picture printed on both sides. For example, Rita Berman's books, I absolutely love them, but as you can see, they have pictures on both sides, so I would never use alcohol markers in these books. Some water-based markers you can use in double-sided books, but even then sometimes there's a bit of shadowing and bleed through. But definitely alcohol markers are great for single-sided books um, yeah and as you can see you can um, you can blend the markers for backgrounds you can add texture I might zoom you in actually you can add texture to things in different ways that you use the markers um, or you can actually just do I think I have a page in here you can also just do flat color um, where there's no shading, no texture, and it still looks really great and vibrant. So there are quite a number of brands of alcohol markers available um, and they range in price quite significantly. Oops, now I've gone too far. Um, however, because I was first introduced to alcohol markers when I was studying design, um, I was introduced to the Copic brand. Copic are one of the premium brands. Um, there are a few others, but Copic is the one that I use and I love. Um, however, they are, they are very expensive, especially if you live somewhere like Australia. Um, so this is my collection. I have been collecting them for uh, 15, 18 years, um, so it is an investment. Um, I don't let anybody else use them. They are mine um, because I don't want them ruined. So these Copic come in three, three different um, kinds of markers. So these round ones are the Copic Chow markers. 
Um, they are the most affordable kind of marker um, that Copic produce. They have a chisel nib on one end and they have a brush nib on the other. I absolutely love brush nib pens. Um, I find them the easiest to color with. Um, I find you can get beautiful, uh, what do you call it? Blending with the brush nib um, and fading and that sort of thing. So um, it's actually one of the reasons why I started using the chow markers because of the brush nib. The chisel nib is good if you have really large areas to color. Um, and you can also use the point of the chisel nib if, if you really need to get some sort of fine detail, but the, the fine point on the brush nib is also excellent for fine details. Um, sorry, I'm out of breath today. The second kind of Copic marker is the Copic sketch marker, and they are this oval shape here. Um, the sketch also come in a bullet nib and a brush nib. And one thing I really love about Copic markers is, can you see this dark band here? That indicates the brush end. So it's the same um, on, the chow, on the sketch markers and the chow markers. There's the dark end. The light end is the chisel, the dark end is the brush. So you can just very quickly see which is which, but they do also have tiny little um, uh, illustrations as well. Um, icons, I mean. Um, so the Copic Chows, even though they are the most affordable, they don't come in the full range of Copic colors. So that's why I have a few of the Copic sketch markers, just to kind of expand a few colors. I only have six of them. Um, I don't really plan on buying any more. Uh, and then I don't actually have any of the Copic classic markers, but they are a square shape. Um, and they have a bullet nib and a chisel nib. Um, and they come in the full, um, the full color spectrum that Copic offer. Um, what's next? So that's just a very quick rundown on the Copics. Um, I actually have all of the chows now, so this is the full range that they come in. Um, the way that Copics work with their color system is um actually i'm not going to go into that because this isn't a promo for copic um there are a number of other brands that i personally haven't tried but i have heard from lots of people um that they are fantastic markers the first is ohuhu i will put that up on the screen um their alcohol markers are a favorite of a lot of people um, they are um, much more affordable. They come in a variety of um, pack sizes, uh, like set sizes, um, but they aren't refillable. One of the things I love about Copics is you invest in the pen and then you can also invest in the ink and then you can refill your pens. Um, so one of these, they're actually phasing out this kind of packaging. Um, there are others that are a thinner, it's a bit more like a pen um, shape, but it has more ink in it. One of these will fill your pen 10 times. So it's the cost of another pen, but you're actually getting the amount of ink of 10 pens. So for me, that is just... It's a very economical way to do it. It's also a little bit of an eco way to do it because you're not throwing out plastic and pens all the time. Um, and you can actually use the ink separately on its own for alcohol ink paintings and things too, which I actually used to do as well. Um, yes, yeah, so the Ohuhus are not refillable. refillable. 
Um, and I also know that there's another brand called Cali Art, which again, I will put up on the screen. Um, I've heard really good things about them as well. Um, and yeah, just go online and have a look. There are lots of different brands. Um, however, you know, you get what you pay for. So some are going to last longer than others. The ink in some are going to be smoother. The ink in others might be more patchy or it might bleed through more, all that sort of thing. So I will always recommend Copic, but I totally, totally understand that it is a big investment um, and it is something that you might want to build up over time. Um, another good brand is, just get these out of the way, they're very heavy. Um, I only have this one pack of these. Um, they're Spectrum Noir markers. They come in a fine tip and a brush tip. I have, I just bought these because I've heard that this linen color is beautiful for skin tones. So these are actually, um, what are they? Hexagonal, um, markers they've got the name and the number that's the brush tip see these ones here don't have any indication of like very quick indication as to which end is which you have to find the um the icon and that's the brush nib um but these are on the pricier side as well but they are also beautiful markers um and these kind of come in more I guess designer colors, like it even actually says here with professional hand-picked colors. So they come in these sets of different color combinations. Um, and yeah, it is a good way to start um, to be able to get different combos. So that's an option as well. I will put these out of the way. So, um, what else? So with the Copic markers, they you can get these um, color swatch books. I will just zoom you in. So this um, shows you the colors in different color families. I tend to do like one swipe of the color and then kind of color a bit darker. Um, but yeah, it's all in the color families. But you can also online get this hex chart um, from Sandy Olnock. I will um, have a link to this in the description, but she has actually arranged all of the Pantone colors um, in relation to each other. So um, for example, so you can like, okay, for example, you can look at the reds all together um, and think, mm, I actually want to use that red. And so RV means that it's got a bit of violet in it. So it's not actually going to be in the general reds, red markers, which in here you only have all the R markers together. So you wouldn't even see that the RV is a choice. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'll put those out of the way as well. So the other thing that is super, super important to consider when you are using alcohol markers is the kind of paper that you use because they will work very, very differently on different papers. So I'm just going to grab a pen, a marker. This is BVO2 and the name is Prune. <laughs> And I just tend to use the um, brush end all the time. Oh, and you can also put the other lid on the end so you don't lose it, which I like as well. So this is just normal copy paper. I've actually got a few sheets here because I don't want it to go through onto my table. Um, so as you can see, you can just get um, beautiful color from a an alcohol marker. Sorry, 
Um, so you can get really fine lines from the nib. You can go fine to thick. So these are good for like calligraphy. I can't do calligraphy, I'm terrible at it. Um, if you want to use the bullet nib, you can get wider lines and areas done a lot better, or you can use, quicker, I mean, or you can use the point of the bullet, the point of the chisel <laughs> to um, get a finer line as well. So that is standard copy paper. So that's going to be like how you can see it's gone through onto the next page and through on the back. Um, this is pretty much the result that you will get in alcohol, Amazon printed books. Um, and uh, so that's a good, you know, for cheap paper, that's a pretty good result. So here I've got some watercolor paper that I've used previously. Um, here, I don't know, I might zoom you in. Watch how the ink reacts to the paper. It just gets soaked up straight away. And this is what we call thirsty paper. And it is not a good idea to use your markers on this paper because your ink will just be used up super, super quickly. Um, and you'll be forever refilling them. And if you've got markers that aren't refillable, then you're gonna be throwing your pens out really quickly. And that's really sad. So water paper, watercolor paper is a no-no. So we have our standard copy paper, which is okay, but the absolute best paper for markers is marker paper, a bleed proof marker paper. So for my Aussies, I got this at Kmart. It's the Anko brand. And honestly, it is one of the best marker papers I have come across. It is, I think, $5 for um, for the page, for the pad, um, and you get 30 pages. Um, but compare that to other more expensive brands, you're paying a lot more for the same amount and you just don't need to. So I might just pull this page out, sorry about that. Uh, but again, I'm going to just put this paper underneath because even though it says it's bleed proof, um, it's kind of talking more about the spread of the ink across the paper, not so much it going through to the back. So I don't know if you can see, but this is just going on really smoothly. The other thing about alcohol markers is the color can change as it dries. So um, it's really important to swatch out your alcohol markers because, um, because of that color change, you may end up using a color that turns out differently to what you expected. So, um, so you can actually still see some of my brush strokes here and that's part of the purpose of marker paper as well. It's for people who illustrate um, and want that variation, um, but it is much smoother than, even though you can still see that, it is much smoother than a lot of other papers um, and you get just a beautiful result. This paper also, this Anko paper, is also good for pencils. Um, so I will often print out my PDF coloring pages on this paper. I will do a base of alcohol markers and then go over it and add detail with pencil. So that is another thing to consider. Um, yeah, so you can actually kind of using a bleed proof pad, you can get more detail and more texture with your markers. Now, some of the tricks that I have discovered over the years is that alcohol markers are all about how much time um, the 
pen is in contact with the paper. So the more time it's touching, the more it will bleed. Oh, this is the blueproof paper. That's not gonna help us. Um, the more time it's touching, the more it will bleed. So, um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom you in. I might start again, actually. So, where are we? Here. So I touch the paper and you can see that the more ink goes onto the paper, the more that spot is bleeding out. And that's what, that's what we mean when we talk about bleed. So you don't really wanna be resting your mark like that because again, you're going to be using up a lot of ink. So, however, to get a smooth finish, you do kind of need to have um, your pen in contact with the paper a bit. So it's kind of more about layers. So for example, that's just one layer like that. You can see it's a bit streaky. Oops, where are we? You can see it's a bit streaky. But then if I kind of, I feel like this mark is actually running out now. It needs refilling. But you can see if I go over it, while it's still wet, you can get a really lovely finish. So then if I grab another marker and I wanna to start to blend these colors, it's best to do it while both colors are still wet and you get a much better result and you can come back again and see you can get really lovely blends and that's just a very quick one. Um, <clears throat> but yes, you kind of need to go over it a little bit. I guess like pencils, you do your layers. With markers, you do your layers. It's best to do your layering while the ink is wet. Um, and just be aware while you're coloring, the ink can stay wet for a little while. So if you rest your hand on there, you're going to get ink come off on you or anything that you put on top of your page. So again, as you can see, that is the next page behind and probably the page after that will also have, yeah. So we've used a lot of ink. Um, and that's the bleed proof paper, whereas, sorry, that's the normal paper, whereas the bleed proof paper, that's the other side. So you're not getting anywhere near as much transfer through. So there's some tips. Next up, I wanted to show you a picture. Let's zoom it right out again. I wanted to show you a picture I colored yesterday that is simply alcohol markers um, in a flat style, um, which I thought really suited this Scandinavian folk style. Um, and yeah, it's just, um, it's just a really lovely finish and I love using markers. Um, but. For those of you who are worried about bleed over the lines, yes, it even still happens for me. You can see it here. You can see it here. Um, so it does still happen. It's about practice. You can see it here. You've just really got to be careful. And the more you do it, the less, um, you know, the less that that happens. So for those of you that didn't believe me that I still make, have the bleed over the lines, it does still happen. And this is just Amazon printed paper, like Amazon paper. So um, it's pretty much the same as copy paper um, that I was showing you before. So you can still get a good finish, um, at least with the Copics. I'm not sure how other markers react to that paper. So, all of that said, I thought I might do a bit of a colour with you. 
So this is our Frogs and Friends Colour Along hashtag picture for this month. It's illustrated by Chris Reiniak and this is one of my backing pages. As you can see, I've used it quite a lot, but I will put that in behind. Now this paper is actually a heavyweight um, satin paper that I got this printed onto um, because it was a PDF coloring book. Um, and this is pretty good for markers as well because um, it's smooth and it's heavy, heavyweight. So I've used markers um, in this book but as you can see it does still come through so you need to protect your other page by putting in your other sheet so Megan um, from Disney Meg's coloring is my co-host of this hashtag and she chose this cute little guy um, uh, for this month because her she has another tag that she does um, an ABC challenge and her letter for this month is H. So she thought hat would be cute. So, um, yeah, I guess let's get started. Um, all right, so what am I gonna do? I've also got this here because I'm going to um, swatch my colors a little bit. It's just the way I tend to work. Um, as I said, you are better off having your, um, oh, where's it gone? You are better off having your colors already swatched out, already dry. Um, in fact, I might just put that to the side and okay so let me try and find the color I want okay so I am using in the Copic Chow's YR16 for the cone so one thing I really like about um, grayscale with your markers is you can end up doing super super quick coloring because you've already got shading there I often will add some extra shading with a darker color um, but you absolutely don't have to you could totally just do one color one color one color and pretty much be done so again I'm going to use the brush nib I might zoom you in And to try and avoid going over the lines, what I tend to do is not actually color right up to the line. So the fact that the pens bleed, I kind of use that to my advantage and have it bleed up to the line rather than color up to the line. So I might have to zoom you in a bit more. Sorry for all the wobbling. Okay, so hopefully you can see, I mean, this has thicker lines, so it's going to be a bit easier to color as well. So something that um, you should consider with your pages and where you might like to use alcohol markers is on images that have thicker outlines uh, because it can hide a lot of the bleed. So I tend to kind of outline my areas and then fill it in. If it's a bit patchy, I kind of go over it again just to try and get a good solid color. So again, we just, and as you can see, there's that flex in the brush nib, which I really like rather than using a bullet or a chisel nib. So I just kind of outline and fill in. And again, this paper, I just got this printed at Officeworks for my Aussies. Um, and it just, the color goes on really smoothly, which I really love. 
don't know if you can hear that squeaking but um, this paper does tend to um, the pens tend to squeak over where there's the shading where the ink is on the page sorry I'm a bit of a I tend to turn my page a lot when I color hopefully it's not too bothersome for you But as you can see, that looks pretty great. That's just one color with no blending or anything because it's a grayscale picture. So then I might go with YR7. Ooh, where are we? Here, YR7. So the, num the letters stand for yellow red 07. Um, so that's going to be an orange because yellow and red together makes orange. So I'm just going to go over these darker areas. Oopsie, I went over the line. It happens. Go over the darker areas with this darker color just to kind of enhance the shadow. And one thing I love to do with the brush markers is to feather so that is where you start off with a lot of pressure and as you do your stroke you kind of lift off to get a nice sort of blend because I don't want a hard line somewhere here I want it the darker color to fade into the lighter color so I'm just feathering that up a bit and I don't I'm hoping you can see this the technique I'm using. So again, start off hard and then lift up and flick quickly. And you get that effect of a fade of color. And that's one of the reasons why I love brush nibs so much because you can get that effect. Okay, so now I am going to use a warm grey because I just pretend, prefer to use warm greys at the moment. So this is warm grey zero, W zero. And I'm going to add in some, okay, zero is too pale. Um, let's go with, let's see if W1, warm gray one is better. Yeah, that's a bit better. It's feathering it out again to give the illusion of the um, roundness of the cone. I'm feeling a lot of pressure now that you're watching me, but that's okay. Hopefully this is helping. So yeah, we've got some shading on the cone. Um, I feel like this guy needs to be purple. Purple? Mm, I don't know actually. Let's go down our ground and I'll show you a bit more of the feathering flicking thing <laughs> that I tend to do um, let's go with E33 which is sand and I'm going to color in around here so this is the kind of, oh, you can't see. This is the kind of effect that I mean, where you flick the pen up off the page towards the end of your stroke. But I don't know if you can see that, how it's light on the end. That means that this pen is starting to run out of ink. Um, and I'm pretty sure I don't have a refill for this. So it was probably the wrong color to choose. But, oh, you can't see again. 
keep bringing it down too fast. Sorry about that. So I just kind of want to give the illusion of ground. I'm sorry for the squeaking. That's also another sign that your mark is getting low if it's squeaking just on the normal parts of the paper where there's no ink printed. Just feathering that out a bit like that. I might go up in here a bit more, which is difficult because I have no ink left on the very tip of the nib. And I'll do in here and then come back in there with a darker color as well. Okay, so for our darker color, I will use uh, E35 Chamois. And we'll just go in on the darker bits and fill that in again to enhance the shadow. And I might actually color the stones or the bits of dirt in darker as well. Okay, so I decided that the frog in this book, um, his name is Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was a bullfrog, even though he's not a bullfrog. <laughs> So little Jeremiah, even though he, uh, in my mind, he's the same frog on all the pages, he doesn't look the same on every page because to me that's too boring. So he's going to have a variety of outfit changes. Maybe he's like a chameleon frog. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, but in this one, I am going to color him um, in green but I'm going to do kind of a, a bluey green that's bright and fun. So again, I'm just coloring all of him and that is YG41 Pale Cobalt Green. And then I'm going to use BG34 Horizon Green to add in some of his shadows and lines. See, I just use the tip very finely, very softly. You hardly even have to touch it to the page to get those fine lines. Just adding in some shadow for Jeremiah. And then, I don't know why, but I really like to do his eyes purple. So he's gonna have purple eyes. Cause that's cute. So that was BVO2 Prune again. Okay. So for our friend here, he looks a little bit nervous, doesn't he? <laughs> like he's gritting his teeth. Oh, what I forgot was to add some shadow to Jeremiah's eyes. And I usually use my a warm gray again. So this is W0. Just to add in, you might not be, even be able to see that really on camera. I'm not sure but it kind of just adds a little bit of shadow. 
So, our friend. What colour do I really want to do him? Yeah, I think he's supposed to be purple. I might do a red purple. Red purple. Mm, okay, I'll do V15 Mallow for his overall colour and then we will find a darker one for his shadows. So again, just going very gently around the lines and fill it in as you go and try and get an even coverage while you're there rather than going moving on to other sections before you even it out because it will be more difficult to even it out once it starts to dry. So in some ways you do need to work fairly quickly oops, with markers and I like to brush in the direction that makes sense to the picture rather than going rather than going across ways like this, I'll go around with the shape to, um, to get a smoother finish. So if while you've been watching this, any questions have popped up in your mind, feel free to leave them as comments down below and I will do my very best to answer them. As I said, I'm not an expert, I'm not an illustrator. This is just how, oops, just went over his teeth. This is just how I have come to learn to use them um, after years of using them. And it's what works for me. I love the range of colors that you can get with alcohol markers. <clears throat> I love the finish that you get. To me, they feel like a very, very simple, quick, easy way to color. Um, and I just really love them. But as I said, there are definitely some books that you would not use alcohol markers in because they bleed through or the detail is just too fine. Although sometimes you can base things with alcohol markers and then go back in and add in the fine detail later. Um, but yeah, even though I've been using markers a lot for a lot of years, I um, have been using pencils a lot more lately and I've been trying to improve my skills with those. So that's been fun. Now we go down, do his hands and his body. There's a bug on my page. So I just realized that you couldn't see what I was doing. Let's zoom out again. So I just colored in his body there. Um, and let's use V17, which is amethyst for his shadows.
Sometimes for faded shadows, I just kind of do a little bit of a wiggle um, to get it to bleed out or fade out rather than being a solid line. He's got a line on his belly. Oops. See, that ended up too harsh to me, that line. So I'm going to try going over it with the mellow because it might just kind of soften the edges a bit there. Yep, there we go. So you can do that as well. Add some more of the original color in to help while it's still wet. It will only work while it's still wet to kind of help blend out the colors. This is going to be too dark across there. It's going to make him look like he's got a moustache. Do I have a middle colour? Let's see if this is... I'm not sure if this is going to work. I might just ruin this, but let's see. No, it's working. Okay, so this is um, V04 Lilac. Just adding, as it dries, it is fading quite a bit, but that's fine. It's just kind of, it will help to add some shadow. Without it being too much. Maybe we do this line up here as well. I feel like that would be in shadow. He's looking pretty good. And something I tend to do in this book, and I'm not really sure why, is I often give the characters, so like he's green with purple eyes, he's purple, and I feel like I want to give him green eyes. I don't know why, I just tend to swap their eye colors around. It kind of helps to, um, tie the page together too doing that so there his eyeballs and now we'll do the shading again with our W0 super light warm grey to add in those shadows in a very subtle way I guess his cape should be orange too, to match his hat. So I know in America these are called traffic cones. We do call them that here as well, but we actually call them witches' hats more than often because of the shape of them. And he's actually wearing it as a hat. So I guess that makes sense. Uh, Let's go in with the orange. Yes, so make sure you ask any questions you have. If you also use alcohol markers a lot, feel free to add any tips that you have into the comments too for others to read and be able to learn from. Um, that would be really great. And let me know if there are any other um, any other mediums that you've seen me use that you might like me to teach or do a little bit of a how-to on. Um, I do have my series Learn With Me, um, which I will link in the iCards that, um, that we learn together about new, um, new mediums because there are lots that I have never used and would like to use and so I'm learning as I go. I did just go over that with the orange sometimes going in with the other color can help fade that a little bit 
which it just did, so that's good. Uh, I forgot his teeth. So I'm just gonna do shadow again with the Y, sorry, the W0 to shadow his teeth. And I might actually use, I have some of my, not that, have some of my white markers here. <coughs> my white pens I should say and I might just go over this bit to fix his teeth and the last bit is his stop sign so what I thought I might do for this is actually color the whole black area and the word stop in red and then color, go back over the word stop with white. However, that will probably end up turning out pink. I just want to avoid getting it all in the letters. Um, like having to color around the letters is what I mean. Let's see. This is our 29 Lipstick Red. I know I want to do Lipstick Red as well. So... You might be wondering why I'm colouring the black. But it is, I'm just going over it. It is because there are tiny little sections I'm making a mess of this that are white and overall it will give an impression of red when colored so what other pens do I have here oh that's a glaze so that's not going to help me what's this one? Oh, this okay let's try the Posca white Get it going. Oh, I'll just pause while I charge this pen. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully the pen will work now. We shall see. Let's go on the outline here first. And then carefully Tracing the letters. Mm, might not have been the best idea I've had ever, but <laughs> it's there, it's done. Um, might just do his little freckles in the darker purple. I think that's it. Let's zoom out. So that is our little frog and our little friend, little Jeremiah. And yes, he's pretty cute. So that is a quick kind of overview and beginner's guide to using alcohol markers. As I've said a bunch of times, I really hope that it's helpful. I hope it makes sense. Um, again, ask me questions if there's anything you want me to clarify. Um, if you want to play along with our Frogs and friend, Friends Color Along, you can do so by um, coloring this particular page anytime before the end of this month and posting it to Instagram using the hashtag Frogs and Friends Color Along. Um, we would love to see your pages. Megan and I love to see how everybody interprets the pages differently. Um, you should also head over to Megan's channel and check out her coloring of this page. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for spending all this time with me today. I hope it was helpful. I hope that you have a better understanding of alcohol markers now and roughly how to use them or how to get started. Um, my tip, if you are wanting to buy 
um, start collecting Copic markers is to take a look at your colored pencils and see which ones you use the most, which are the shortest pencils, and then try and um, buy markers that are similar to those colors because you know you're going to use them because they're the pencils that you use all the time. So that would be my little tip. Um, yeah, thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you and next time. Bye.